Alrighty, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to our Wednesday webinar. Today, we are halfway through the week. It is a new month as well, so we're going to be going over a couple things today. Uh, it is August 1st, 2018. So just want to very quickly recap to, uh, I'm sorry, July. Uh, we finished off officially July with a great month. Um, right around 15% growth last month on the trade copier account. So if you guys are connected to that, your account should reflect that similar growth. Um, and just a really overall really great month. And I'm just really looking forward to August. Um, if you guys were around last year, last year, our best month uh, last year was August. And uh, I'm hoping to, you know, maybe get close to topping it this year. We did about 20% last year, August of 2017. So, um, you know, I, I'd be just really happy if we get, if we can match this month or, you know, do a little bit better than um, last month, if we can get right around that 15% or more. But, you know, even if we fall short and still reach our target of um, 5%, I'm still happy either way. But um, I'm have a very optimistic outlook for this for this month. So we're gonna go over a couple of different things today. Um, I'm gonna go over a couple of different setups, talk about a couple of different things on the calendar, and give you some targets and outlook. So um, first off, let's go ahead and look at the economic calendar uh, tomorrow. Really big thing is we have a lot of news for the pound. So. Just big thing is that this week there's already been two interest rate decisions. We're gonna have the third and final interest rate decision for the week tomorrow, and then NFP Friday. Big difference between the two interest rate decisions that have, we've already seen this week and the interest rate decision happening tomorrow is that the interest rate decision tomorrow is actually changing. They are forecasted to increase interest rates. Um, the interest rate decision that was yesterday for, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, earlier today for the U.S. dollar and the interest rate decision that was also yesterday for, or I'm sorry, uh, Monday night, Tuesday morning um, for the yen, the interest rate stayed the same as well. So there wasn't really a lot of volatility, but it's forecasted for the interest rates to change for the pound. So that's going to definitely create a lot of volatility, probably some major spikes on pound pairs. So really what that means is just don't trade pound pairs. Okay. Other than that, other than that, uh, we don't really have a whole lot for the next 24 hours until Friday, which is NFP, which is for the U S dollar. So really I'm not too interested in, trading most us dollar pairs this week because there's nfp on friday and that could create a lot of volatility so and then definitely not any pound pairs but we'll still go through the markets um so let's go ahead and let me give you guys my outlook so the dollar this week overall has found a little bit of traction we've seen that since the markets have opened this week um after a sell-off towards the end of last week on the dollar we've seen a pretty strong dollar this week and um, it looks like we're going to be going into NFP a pretty strong dollar. So I'm still very much so on the sidelines with the dollar. Um, that means with, with pairs like Euro USD and USD Swiss Franc and pound dollar and AUD USD and NZD USD. A lot of these pairs that uh, we tend to trade because they have a strong correlation to the dollar. I'm not interested in trading right now because I don't want to trade the dollar. I kind of want to wait and see what happens, but we're still very close um, to the current resistance around 95. And if we break that area, like I've said for a while, there's really nothing holding price down until, you know, it, it definitely has room to move a lot higher. That's the overall trend of the dollar right now. Gold, where do I stand on gold? So um, I want to just kind of go over gold because it was actually requested and I before it was actually requested I actually planned on spending a couple minutes on gold and just show, so you guys so you guys kind of have an idea of where I'm looking at um if you guys notice something with gold I have the nearest $50 marked so actually just before this webinar I put the 1250 level here I'm sorry the 1200 level 
um, I removed the 1250. What I'll go ahead and do is I'll actually put the 1250 and let me go ahead and do this. Oops, not that. Give me just a moment. Let's go horizontal line, 1250. And let's lock this and I'm gonna remove. Well, I'll remove in just a moment. So it's a good idea on gold to work using the quarters theory. If you guys are not familiar with the quarters theory, it's um, an idea or a strategy that works really well on gold. And for me specifically, I use it um, for every $50. So some people might use it on a higher uh, scale, like every $100, but I think it also works really well with the every $50. So what I mean is generally when you see price break through like a 50, every $50 level, it'll go not, not always straight to that level, but it'll generally go to the next $50 level. Um, so what I mean right now, so using it in the current example is right now we're below 1250, right? We were, I mean, let me just kind of like backtrack just a little bit to just kind of give you guys an idea of how this has worked and how I've, use this in the past couple months because if you guys have been following along with the price predictions that I've made and the targets that I've made on gold, um, those targets have been based on this method. So if you guys remember all the way back up here, some of you guys may not have been in positive traders this long, but um, for those of you guys that have, I know it's a lot of you guys, we didn't trade gold for a very, very long time. And we still really, I you haven't really seen me place any positions on gold, but this is good good to just follow and know because one, you know, maybe you might want to do trading gold on your own. Two, you never know, we might open up a position on gold. And three, um, the correlation between gold and other pairs is just good to know. It's good to have a good understanding on gold. So if you guys remember, just back in this area, um, when we rejected off the 1350 area, actually we I had predicted down in here first. Hey, let me let me just re, let me just backtrack just a second. Back in this area, when we had bounced off this 1350 area, I had predicted that we were going to come back down to the 1300 and then back up to the, thir and then we did, we came back towards the zone. And then once we rejected off of this area, I said that we were going to go back up to the 1350 area. We did go back up to the 1350 area. That's not the, the point of me pointing this out. I'm just trying to show you guys the accuracy. But the whole thing was at 1350, when we got back up to 1350, when the consolidation right around this circle right here, when, when price was inside this circle, um, I told you guys that my targets were at 1300 first. We ended up seeing that decline. And you can see it came down to 1300. At 1300, it bounced off at 1300. At that time, that was the breakout on the dollar index. And the dollar index was very, very bearish. You know, gold was very, very bullish. This was at the time when the dollar index at the beginning of this year um, broke out, right? And it started going bullish. So, or, yeah, started going bullish. That's when we started selling gold. That's when we started seeing this downside on gold. Okay. And then uh, the dollar continued to stay bearish. So I told you guys that around this, we ended up breaking through this 1300. And now a lot of you guys have been even more so in the group when this happened. There was a, all this consolidation underneath the 1300 level. And I said that this consolidation was going to lead to us moving towards first the, 13, the 1280 level because that was the trend line right here. And then ultimately towards the 1250 area. And then, you know, the fact that it just moved right just directly from from 1300 right to our target so quickly. I mean, that's definitely is, is very nice. Uh, it doesn't always happen like that, but I'm just trying to show you guys that it's good to just mark off the $50 levels with gold. So anyways, getting into where we're at now, gold broke through. Let me zoom in a little bit, right? We'll come down just a little bit. Let me just get in here a little bit. So we broke through the, 1250 area we got to our target the 1250 it actually bounce off of this major trend line actually let me back up just one more second so you guys can see that so that trend line makes sense right this trend line goes back a while a ways right so i would recommend on gold to get your chart to set up the exact same way mark mark off the most the cl the closest 50 dollars. so i'm actually going to remove the 1300 dollars. i only kept it there because i wanted to tell that have just break down how, how we've been now we're between the 13, I mean the 1200 and the 1250 area. Cause we're at 1220. 
So we're at the nearest $50 above price and the nearest $50 below price. Not $50 from price, but $50 as a whole number, 1200 to $1,250. Okay? And then we have the trend lines, right? Simple, simple trend lines. You don't necessarily have to have this trend line right here because we're, you know, if price was to come back up to this trend line, that's about, you know, 40 or $50 higher. Actually, much more than that. That's like $60 higher, 60 or $70 higher. But it's possible. I just like how clean that trend line is, so I'm going to keep it for now. You also don't necessarily need to have this resistance all the way up here. Just something I have on my charts. But what you just should have, definitely have is this 1250 area. 1200 level and then you should have this trend line this this trend line on the daily right just this one very simple trend line where boom boom and then boom just recently right when we broke through the 1250 area where we bounced off of and then we're consolidating underneath that right now um, and I've told you guys pretty much since the beginning of this week you know not initially that I'm bearish on gold but um, kind of insinuating that I am bearish on gold right I said I'm not interested in buying gold whatsoever um, because it was, if you guys remember since the beginning of this week, it's just been consolidating around the lows. It's probably going to move lower. Um, so that, that's what I'm getting at, is we're probably going to at least see the 1200 level tested before going further. So I like to work with gold in the 50, you know, each $50, and then evaluate price action around those levels and take it from there. So hopefully that kind of breaks down my strategy on gold drop something in the chat if you guys think uh if that helped you guys out um so we had a question 1205 on the weekly absolutely yeah it, it definitely can see 1205 i mean i think it can see 1200 so 1205 is definitely in reach hopefully that helped with you guys uh, Euro USD. Euro USD. my eyes are definitely on Euro usd um you know, for now, just to kind of make this chart a little less confusing, I'm actually I'm actually going to remove the the fib, this Fibonacci retracement, but just know that this green zone is the 23.6, right? Right. If you want to declutter your chart a little bit, maybe you want to like de, you know, do that, and then maybe just throw in a little text. Just be like, boom, boom. 23.6 percent and then okay maybe throw that maybe even inside this box and then there you go so now you know without having like a giant cluttered chart you know that that's a 23.6 percent obviously the text is going to move around a little bit so really best thing is to do just remember it right just remember it's not hard just know it's one pair 23.6 easy stuff um but overall right we have this big this big bear flag, this big consolidation. Um, one thing just to watch, actually, we can put, I'm just going to see if it looks nice on the four hour. What I'm looking at is a trend line, you guys, a support trend line here. I'm seeing if it looks better on the daily. This is what I would have. New trend line. This is the four hour chart Euro USD. I would watch, I'm not don't jump into Euro USD yet. It does look bearish. Um, you know, we just we just looked at the dollar index. The dollar index definitely has bullish tones. Gold has bearish tones, you know, so that everything should pull that should pull the market down on Euro USD. Um you know, but, but don't get greedy guys, you know, don't get caught up trying to catch a little move right here with, uh, you know, where, where you potentially have bad risk to reward when you have the possibility to, you know, maybe catch a move like that. that that's what we're really waiting for on Euro USD. All of this consolidation is just trapping retail traders into you know, buying at these lows. And, and don't get me wrong, it there's argument for it too. And we've talked about this multiple times. I won't really get into it right now, but there definitely is argument for a retracement. But our main thing, our whole thing that is going to 
confirm a retracement, the only way price is going to move higher is if we take out this level. And we can see that time and time again, the past couple weeks, price is really just failing to take out this 23.6, which is basically the 117.50 area. Price is failing to take out this area. Um, but one reason why I won't jump into this trade early, you know, everything looks good to the downside, but we also have NFP on Friday. So that's going to create a lot of volatility. Um, if it ends up being good for the dollar, then, you know, the, it, it's going to, that's going to be the catalyst for this pair to go lower. Um, but also there's a likelihood, a chance that NFP could be bad for the dollar and that could create buying pressure in this pair. So no matter how technical this chart looks, how good it looks to the downside, how textbook this bear flag is, and on the larger time frames, it looks like it should go lower. We could see that manipulation on, you know, on Friday where, you know, spikes up just momentarily on Friday, you know, maybe based on a good, good, um, on, on a bad NFP report for the dollar. And then maybe next week we end up seeing that, that sell off on Euro USD. So it just, it's hard to say, uh, before it happens, obviously. So we'll look to see what happens, but definitely overall bearish. USD Swiss Franc, USD Swiss Franc. We've been watching this support trend line. It broke it earlier this week. You guys remember that when I actually posted about this, this daily candle broke through this trend line, something to watch that if we got confirmation, if it moved lower, we we're going to be targeting the 50% retracement level, but we aren't breaking lower. We're continuing to consolidate around the highs. And, um, you know, just as everything I've mentioned already, if we do see the dollar continue to rise, we do see Euro USD fall. We're going to see USD Swiss franc go higher. Neither pound pairs we're going to talk about at all right now with the pound news. We'll revisit the pound tomorrow. Dollar yen, I'm not interested in trading either right now. We did get that rejection I said earlier this week. You know, there is one of two things that was going to happen at this trend line when we were right here, that we were either going to break this trend line or we were going to bounce off this trend line. We can obviously see in hindsight that we broke this trend line. Um, I think a couple of you guys were bullish on dollar yen. So if you, if you caught some trades on that, awesome. You were definitely right. And going into, you know, going into the end of this week, we'll just see how this, everything reacts to NFP. USDJPY and NZ, I'm sorry, uh, Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar. Um, also, just to be a little bit more like professional, a little bit more, uh, not even professional, but a little bit more, what's the right word I'm trying to say? more common with my terms. You know, I know sometimes people call different pairs, different things. Probably going to start, I'm probably going to start calling, uh, NZD USD, the New Zealand dollar versus the U S dollar, uh, which it's generally referred to as the Kiwi. If you guys are not familiar, so I'll probably start referring to that as Kiwi and then generally pound USD GBP USD up here. This is generally referred to as cable. Um, so I'll probably start referring to them. Um, as their respective slang terms. But um, AUD, USD, and the Kiwi are both pretty bearish. They're both consolidating around their lows right now. We've been talking talking about these pairs for quite a while and just really just being on the sidelines. Major, major consolidation. They look very similar to Euro USD, right? Big, big downtrend on both of these pairs are all on all three of these pairs. And then recently, the past couple of weeks, just a lot of consolidation. I'm telling you right now, you know, record this, write this down in your journal. All three of these pairs, there's going to be a break. It's going to be to one direction or to the other. And when that break happens, we're going to see a big move. Most likely, you know, the, just the general, if you're just going off of pure price action and what should happen based on the overall trend, all three of these pairs should continue much lower. Uh, USD CAD, I'm, I'm really moving. You'd see I unmarked USD CAD. Um, I'm not interested in trading USD CAD anymore. Um, if anything, I actually think USD CAD could be potentially going up at this point. Um, yesterday I said USD CAD had potential to the downside and there was right. I mean, over the past 24 hours, if you found some, there was definitely some downside on USD CAD you can see, but it's really big exhaustion candles, just really nasty price action. Um, it's very unclear, but if anything, it's, I think it's actually making a reversal. 
Okay, so potential buying opportunities on USD CAD. And that's really gonna get to it, to uh, Euro AUD. You can actually see that the only pair out of everything on here, and I'm, I'm really not trying to waste your guys' time, guys. I'm really, you know, I, I really try to find, I'm trying to find a mixture between, you know, I wanna be as in-depth as possible and share, you guys, share with you guys, you know, what's in my brain and what I'm thinking and, and you know, what my thought process is. But at the same time, I'm also trying to get to, you know, try to share with you guys the most valuable information and also not try to bore you guys to death. So it's really hard. Um, I also, it's hard. I don't get a lot of feedback from you guys. You know, I mean, I assume most of you guys just watching this and not giving feedback, you enjoy the way I do this, but um, I don't really get any feedback from any of you guys, um, you know, except for positive feedback. I don't really get any criticism or anything. So until I get criticism or you guys don't like a certain thing that I way I do it, then I'll just keep doing it like this. So sorry if it's boring for some of you guys, but uh, Euro AUD, I am waiting for this support to break. Really main thing is just watching the support. I mean, 157.24, this is what to watch, right? 157.24, the 50 EMA, the support zone, this major, major demand for this pair around this area, whatever you want to call this, be watching that level. On a break of it, I can assure you there's going to be a big move to the downside. The 50, I'm telling you, the 155% retracement, if it does break this downside, that's a very conservative, uh, you know, that's a very conservative target level. There's a very good chance it could go much, much lower than, than that. So, um, you know, I'm watching for this move. That's the move I'm looking for on your AUD. It also is nice because that correlates to euro usd right we're looking to sell i ideally we're looking to buy the dollar and sell euro usd and essentially that's selling the euro right you're selling the euro and buying the dollar so you know this would give us a bit of confluence between those two pairs and in, in supporting our sell bias on euro usd but that's the last thing we're looking at you know the main thing we're just really looking at is i'm not even really bias the downside on this pair i mean i am and i'm not you know what i mean i'm i'm not i'm I'm really only biased if if this support breaks, but as of right now, I'm, I'm unbiased, if that makes sense. Sorry if that's confusing. Let's see, we got some stuff in the chat, and then we'll probably wrap this up. NZD CAD looking nice. Euro AUD two sideways for you. Need that breakout? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm definitely not saying to enter Euro AUD. Definitely should just be something that's majorly on the sidelines, just knowing that there's going to be a really good risk to reward. Um, you said Euro CAD. I think Euro CAD. No, you said NZD CAD. Um, NZD CAD. NZD CAD. Yeah, NZD CAD's got a little bit of a bear flag. We're consolidating around the lows. Possibility for a reversal on NZD CAD. Um, but while I do have Euro CAD open very quickly, there is this is a pair I was looking at uh, courtesy of Louis. Um, and we're at the bottom of a range right now. If you guys can see Euro CAD, we, we have been inside of this range. Um, good chance, possibly good chance that price reverses around this area. Opportunity for a high risk to reward trade. Um, and I would be looking for price to go back up to the top of this range and, and stay within this range. So we'll, um, this, this pair is definitely on my horizon. I'm not too interested. I, I mean, I'm not really going to mark it right now. I would like some confirmation. If the, if the four hour candle that closes in the next couple hours here does give us like a, uh, a nice morning star, a nice reversal confirmation pattern, then there's a high probability that I'll place a buy on this trade just as a good high probability trade. It's also really nice that, you know, the news tomorrow is for the pound and the news on Friday is for the dollar. And this is the Euro and the Canadian dollar. So uh, if you guys have noticed, we've been exploring, you know, a lot of these other pairs down here, you'll notice all of these pairs down here at the bottom right of my screen are pairs that we don't generally trade, but it worked out right. Euro AUD has made us a very nice percentage over the past month. So it's working out nicely. Uh, J Dog says you like the reversal on NZD CAD. 
yeah, I, I can definitely see the support on NZD CAD. Uh, I personally like Euro CAD a little bit more, though. I like the channel trading because it's pretty it's pretty easy to take a, a good risk to reward trade with something like this because with channel trading or buying at the lows and selling at the highs, you know, at the end of the day, we're always gambling when we take a trade, right? We're, there's always, in, I mean, it's just as simple as that, right? We're, 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 we're technically professional gamblers, if you want to put it that way, right? We're always looking for, we're never looking for trades that don't have good odds, though. That's the key that makes us the difference between, you know, a gambler that walks into a casino and a gamble and a quote unquote gambler in the Forex markets because we have tools and things that we can use to uh, put the odds or, you know, and it's never ever even putting the odds, right? We're never like physically making the odds better. We're perceiving, it gets very, very psychological and very deep guys, but it, you know, everything is just, we're, it's perceived odds, right? We're, we assume or we perceive that what we're doing is giving us odds, right? So at the end of the day, there's not even, we aren't really stacking odds. So that's a whole nother conversation with psychology and stuff. But the whole idea that I just want to get into is if you, if you buy at the lows and sell at the highs, if you take a trade like this, um, you have the opportunity for a very high risk reward trade. So a lot, a lot of times with these trades, you're going to get stopped out because you're, you're going to have manipulation playing against you, but you take a lot of these trades and and as long as you have a good high risk to reward, then these types of trades are, are appropriate to place. So um, taking a trade at the highs or the lows like this is, is as simple as placing that trade at the high or the low, in this case, buying at the lows. And very simple. You, the, the goal is to get the highest risk to reward as possible. So you would, you're going to use very, very small stop losses, you know, in this case, like a 16 pip stop loss, something, you know, even less than that 20, 15 pip stop losses, um, where you know that you have a high probability of getting stopped out, but you also know you're, you're cutting your losses short because there's a very high probability. You got to keep it, keep in mind that if, if this low is to break, if this trend line breaks and we really break this area that that it's probably going to go a lot lower than, you know, just your stop loss. So that's why it doesn't, there's no point in, in, you know, okay, make the stop loss, you know, double the size, let it, let it breathe a little bit, right? This isn't one of those trades. This isn't that type of trade where you want to like, let it breathe. It's an either all or nothing type of scenario, right? It's either going to work in your favor or it's not going to work in your favor. And it's really not going to work in your favor if it doesn't. So that's why there's, we use risk management, right? We get into the trade, we use 2% on the 16 pip stop loss or 1% on a 16 pip stop loss, you know, generally actually on these types of reversal trades where you're, it's not really higher risk because it's the risk is always the same. You, you control the risk, uh, but maybe you don't have as much going for you as much clues or evidence besides just simply buying at the, at the lows and selling at the highs, then you might want to just, just cut your risk in half. Maybe you generally risk 2%, you risk 1%. And all these things, guys, is actually like something that we might do. So if I, if I see this, we might actually place this trade. Very good chance that we'll take a 1% risk on this trade. Very small stop loss, like 15 to 20 pip stop loss. And looking for a, um, you know, a very high risk to reward where our take profit is somewhere, something, somewhere all the way up here. You know, where we have like a 1 to 10 risk to reward or 1 to 8 or, you know, really once you start getting above like a one to four, one to five, one to six, uh, really high risk reward like that, you know, above that, it's amazing, right? Um, you know, what, what good risk reward trading, you know, really high risk reward or low risk, high reward trading can do for you. So, you know, something like that is a possible setup. And, and the neat thing also about having a trade like this is this trade can get to risk free very quickly you know, we, it only has 18 pips to breathe or, you know, quote unquote breathe. But if we are right, it only has to move 18 pips to hit our hit. And you know, where, or at least with my strategy where I would set my stop loss to break even. So guys, this is, this is what these daily webinars are all about. I'm sure a lot of you guys are watching this right now. And I, I hope a lot of this is a good eye opener. At least even if you learned one thing from this webinar, I think 
you know, spending 30 minutes a day watching this every day, four times a week is worth it. Um, yeah, nuggets value talk. Yeah, guys. So this is, this is really good stuff here. So, uh, you know, this is like the epitome of my trading guys, like my trading, you can see like what, like literally like some of you guys would ask like, Oh, David, you know, you've been trading for so long or whatever, you know, there's like, what's like the reason you're buying down here, guys, there's literally no other reason than the fact that that we're, that we're staying inside a valid range and we're taking a risk. That is what trading is all about. It is about taking risks, but it's about taking smart, calculated not risks, not just saying, oh, I'm going to sell here, I'm going to buy here. You know, and you've probably heard me say before, like, you know, you don't always just buy because it's all the way at the top or sell all the way down at the bottom. Right, right. We aren't just selling or we aren't just buying all the way down because it's down at the bottom. We're also buying because it's, sitting on this, the inside of this channel, it's sitting on the support of this channel. So, you know, you don't want to just blindly say, boom, I'm just going to sell randomly, right? I'm just going to sell here because it's really high or buy here because it's really low. You don't want to do that. You want to have a methodical plan and you can see that like, we haven't even entered this trade yet. And we have a methodical plan, right? We have our, we, we are defining our risk. That is step one on pretty much every trade is defining your risk, knowing where you're going to set your stop loss at and knowing how much cognitively, you know, recognizing how much you're going to trade. We know that this is a slightly riskier, quote unquote, riskier trade than normal to be trading because we don't have 20 different pieces of evidence, you know, five, you know, I'm kind of exaggerating there. We don't have five, 10 different pieces of evidence of, of why we're taking this trade. It's really just because we are a buying at the lows, but the low, the buying at the lows also have confluence with the support of this descending channel that we're in. So we're able to do all that. So I think you guys get the point of what I'm trying to make. So, um, you know, this is just one example, um, on, you know, many things, but this, this is one pair that I think is, is cool to trade right now because it's actually trending, right? It's moving. Most of the markets are in consolidation that we see like, Euro AUD, this trade that we've been looking for for a while. We've taken it. We took a trade on twice last week um, and it worked out for us luckily inside this range. Um, but it's just been ranging. You look at that, that's pretty hard to trade. This is, is, a, is a bit easier to trade. To be quite honest, I wish I would have seen this trade back in here, right? This is a great move. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm not a big fan of like going over like coulda, shoulda, woulda sort of moves, but just, you know, to give you an example, like this is just a great, great move to the downside. Like right here, I see a definitely a potential for a huge short. So this, this is a pair that I'm, I'm actually probably going to be adding. I like the way it trends. I like the way it moves. I've been studying this, um, for quite a bit today. And obviously, you know, I, I need to do a little bit more like research and studying with this pair to really, really understand it just like everything else, but it's something I'm pretty sure a pair that's going to be added to my arsenal because it's nice. It doesn't have the U S dollar in it. It doesn't have the pound in it. Really the U S dollar and the pound tend to be pretty volatile. It doesn't have the Swiss franc in it. Swiss franc isn't my favorite pair. Um, it has the Canadian dollar and the Euro, which I'm both fans of trading. So that's it guys. That's, that's my thoughts for the day. Sorry to go off a bunch of different roads. Uh, but hopefully there is value in here for you guys today. So that's it. Um, Again, remember next week will be normal, normal week, uh, but the following week, the week of, or from my dates from the 9th to the 14th, I'm going to be in Las Vegas for those dates. So that if you look at those dates, it's just a Sunday, a Monday and a Tuesday that fall within those dates. Uh, those days, uh, you know, we might have, I might have it like way before, way after. I might not even do a Sunday outlook depending on how the markets look and just do a Sunday outlook Monday and then do a webinar Tuesday. Um, just depends. So we'll look and we'll, I'll just keep you guys updated, but just want to keep you guys posted. So that's it. If you guys have any questions, reach out to me, have a great week guys and uh, catch you guys tomorrow uh, before NFP and after the interest rate decision for the pound. So stay safe.